the Trinity, a holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is what we celebrate today. And it certainly, just like that, we cannot find anywhere in the Bible the Trinity explicitly explained to us. It really is not. In fact, the word Trinity is not even mentioned in the, in the Bible at all. But in the Bible, in an implicit way, we actually can discover that the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are there right from the beginning. When you open the Bible in the first page, first chapter of the book of Genesis, which is the first one in the Bible, and in that first verse, you already see that it says, you know, God was there, and His Spirit was hovering over the chaos. And then right after that, He organized everything. He put order into that chaos, and he made the day and the night and the sun and the moon and, the, and everything else that there is. And so th right there from the very beginning, we see the image of God the Father and the image of God the Spirit. And then quickly in that same page, we hear that says, after God created each and every little thing, he said, and God says, it is fine. He, it doesn't say, and God thought it was fine, but it says, God said, he mean, meaning that he spoke. When you say something, it's because you're, 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 you know, you're speaking. And so to whom he's speaking? Who? Who do you think that, that God is speaking to? The Father. The Son. Jesus. We know that by now. So implicitly we can see the Trinity there, right? Last week in Pentecost, Jesus clearly said, The Father who has sent me, and I will now go, I'm going to leave you alone, and I'm going back to him who sent me, but I will leave you and I'll send you the Holy Spirit. See? So we have now the Trinity implicit in, in His words. Right? So therefore, out of that, the church have actually, throughout these 2022 years, come up with what we know as the dogma of the whole of the most holy trinity wonderful beautiful now you may ask me so what 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 are, what are we going to do with that it is beautiful we know that and it's a mystery and it's a mystery because it's hard to understand that we have one god and three persons almost like okay god make up your mind are you one or are you three all right no but, but that's a mystery. And, and yet, that's, that's who he is. But what is more important for us is not to know and not to try to, you know, to decipher the mystery because we're not going to be able to see that, at least not now. Maybe when we are face to face with him, maybe we will be able to see that and, 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 and now say, ah, oh, we get, now we get it. But until that time come for each and every one of us, and in Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to these. I'm gonna have to hold these for a for a moment. And so, uh, what I was saying, we got the batteries. Okay.
Are we back? Yeah. Good. Oh, now I now I understand how the you know the the singers will feel when they don't when they have to do these things. Anyway, all right. So let's go back to what I was talking. What is more important for us is not to decipher that that mystery, but to really and try to understand what it re what it means and how can we relate to that. And believe it or not, we, we can relate in a very profound way with the Most Holy Trinity. The first thing that, in which we, that we know that we can relate, it's, uh, let's, we have to go back to the same first chapter of Genesis. After God created everything, who was the last one in the creation? Who? Us. Men and women, he created us last. And he says, again, he's speaking, he says, let us create men in our image and likeness. He didn't say, let, let us create, you know, men in my image, but in our image and likeness. And that is very telling again, because it's not one it's a community there that we already know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And He wanted it for all of us to have the same characteristics that He has. And so let's look at those and see how can we relate with Him. And the very first that we need to actually see is that God is not a solitary individual. He's a community. We already know. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And if we look at ourselves, we also, we also are part of a community. Because none of you nor I came to be on our own. We all come out of a mother and a father. And when we come to be, then we have also immediately a community that we call a family. That's the case for every single one of us. No one can, no one is exempt from that. Right? Now, you may say, Father, and what about those who actually are conceived in a lab, in vitro? Right? Well, that it happens and we know we have seen it but even if it's done that way which we'll talk I'm, i'll talk in, about that in a second it requires a cell from a man and a cell from a woman so that community is in, already there we come out of a man and out of a woman when they are these two cells get together then a human body comes to be. So there the community is the, it's present immediately, no, ma no matter what we say. Which now brings me to the second characteristic of God in which we all share in not such a good way, but we do. God is the perfect being. Everything God has actually done has been done Perfectly. All we have to do is look at nature, look at ourselves, and look at everything, the whole universe, and cannot be more perfect than it is. Now let's look at ourselves. There is no one person, child, young adult, mature, or elder, that it is in this building who does not like to do everything perfectly. Every single one of us like to do everything perfectly. And when we cannot do it perfectly, we get mad. First we get mad with ourselves and then we get mad with those around us or those who prevents us from doing things in the way that we want them. That, my friends, comes out of the same image of God who is perfect and we want to be perfect but we have a problem he is perfect in every way 
but we are not. And so perfection for us comes at a later time. We are not going to be able to attain perfection here on earth, but we will once we are in front of him. Means when we are back to heaven with him. Because then we can say, now I am perfect because I am in front of the perfect one. Make sense? When we try to do everything perfect and we are not happy with our results, then it, we, it becomes a problem that we all know and it's called sin. When we cross the line because we want to be not like God, but we want to be God, then we sin. Because that is not for us to be. We are created in His image and likeness, but not equal. And that makes a difference. And so, the in vitro fertilization, it's precisely those actions in which humanity has crossed the line and want to play and be God. And we know that's not right. But we're not talking about sin today. We're talking about God and how we relate to Him. The third, the fourth thing now, God in this community of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the greatest and the most important characteristic of God is what we already know that we describe Him always. God is love. It is through the bond of love between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that God has been able to create everything. In today's reading, we just heard when Jesus said, Everything that I have was given to me by the Father. He has given me everything. So that means that this... God the Father, because of the love He had for His Son, has given Him everything, absolutely everything. Hey, He's perfect, so He knows how to give imperfection, completely, totally, in perfection, not in imperfection, right? And the Son, as a response of that love, then He was obedient. Because of that love, then the Son was able to be in that cross. Without that love, He wouldn't have been able to do what He did. Which gives us a conclusion here, and it's absolutely true. When there is true love, the food of that love is always obedience. Moms and dads, that you're here. When you met each other at your, in your early days, and you start, you know, looking with butterfly eyes to each other, right? And they started, you know, dating. Immediately, as that bond of love started to, to grow into you, you became obedient to one another. Go back. And that's how it is. And you're laughing, but I want you to reflect it, and you will. You will find that you became obedient. You know, honey, you want to go to the movies? Okay, let's go. You know, although you may not want to go to the movies. You know, implicitly when there is love, we immediately go into the, that obedience because we want to please the other. That's what love is all about. And then, out of that love, because of that love, in obedience, you both came into, in front of the altar and got married. That's how you do it. And out of that love, your children came to be. So all of us come to be, right? Because of the love of mom and dad. Isn't it the same type of love that God has a man, a man himself, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see how uh, are we so alike in many ways? And then the children, 
know exactly that mom and dad will provide for them with everything. They don't care how the breakfast is going to be in the table. They know breakfast will be in the table, period. If mom and dad have money or not to buy it, they don't care, but they know it. It doesn't matter if it's just little or way too much, they know that. And because of that, kids are also obedient, obedient to the fathers. Not all the time, right? We're not perfect, but for the most part, it does work that way. So here it is, something for us to relate. And because of these, and I can tell you, that we can actually extend that image also into this building. This building that we call the, the Church of St. Catherine Drexel, right? It is also a community that can be related to the Trinity. Because all of you who are what? What? Parishioners. Which means you are the church. Because it's you who makes the church, it's not these walls. It's you people who actually make this a church, not the, not the walls. You come here, and you come here for only one reason and one person only. Who is that person? Jesus, who is right there in the tabernacle, right? But there is one more person here that is part of the equation, and from this day forward, it's me your pastor. There you have a trinity again. And in this bond of love between you, me, and Jesus as our center, we are to walk in faith and we are to walk in service. Caring and loving one another. Take it even, even further. Each and every one of you who work, your workplace it's also Trinitarian because all of you have a boss, you know, the big boss, the CEO, the president, however, all the employees and the actual company. You have a Trinity and there are obedience also and hopefully they will be, you know, a good relationship, love between workers. And we can take it into the city, into the state, into our nation, and the whole world. Everything can relate to the Trinity. And that, my friends, is what we need to always understand in a day like today. So from this day forward, now all of us will be together. I can see already something, another building back there in which we're going to be able to worship and get together because we love our God and because we respect and love one another. I have been impressed in these few days being here in this parish with everything that you guys do. I've never seen so many cars giving out food. That was impressive. And that is done by St. Vincent de Paul. Some of you are here, perhaps. I can tell you the amount of students that are already registering in, in religious education. We're preparing the summer camp. You guys are preparing that summer camp. And I went and I, I saw all these rooms in the portable. Fantastic. Incredible. And you know what? All that happens because you are part of a Trinitarian love. Which tells me and brings me to the last thing, and then because I have to stop, otherwise we're not going to be able to leave to the, tonight. True love is always trinitarian. In order to be true love, three need to be present in everything that we do and with everyone. One of those is always our God, and the rest is all of us. So I hope that from this day forward, that we can build a, a relationship, you guys with me and I with you. I'm going to ask you to, hopefully, you know, repeat your name to me as many, every time you meet me, until I am able to repeat your name back to you. So then that means that I now remember it. Just remember, I'm only one, you guys are too many. 
and I have to learn a lot of names, but I will. Just don't get mad. Just keep repeating your name to me that eventually I'll get it, okay? The door of my office is open for all of you. There's not such a thing as you can't get to me or you cannot talk to me. If you call now to the, to the church, you're gonna find that you can reach my extension, 215. You can call me and leave me a message. If I don't answer, I will promise you I'll call you back as soon as I can. You can send me an email. You can do the same with Father Jonathan. His extension is 222, by the way. <laughs> you can send him an email, and either one, both of us, will be there for you. Because I know you guys are all, always going to be there for us. I already know it. I already experienced that. And let us continue walking side by side with Christ. Because that's what we want. All in pilgrimage. All in pilgrimage to heaven. That's where we're going. And hopefully we'll meet again there one day. One day at a time, right? And each of us in his own way. But we are to always be together. Don't be afraid. Knock on the door. And you will be answered. That's something Jesus says. And then from this day forward, I guess... No, Father Paul started this, Father Pedro continued it, Monsignor built this and make it what it is now. Now, I got to go back, you know, and then move to this other great building somehow in some way. And may the Lord and through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, one day we'll be there to worship together and celebrate the great accomplishment of all of us as a family.